so so now we'll go into the next video uh, lecture hello and welcome in this lecture we are going to see how characters strings and booleans are represented inside a computer here is a quick recap of relevant topics that we have already discussed in earlier lectures we have seen the architecture of a simple computer and we have seen how integers and floating point numbers are represented inside the computer in this lecture we are going to see how characters strings and booleans are internally represented in a computer we are going to see how you can declare the above data types uh, in c++ and we'll also put things together and take a glimpse at our first simple c++ program now from an earlier lecture you would recall this diagram where we had shown the basic structure of a simple computer and all the components here basically have information stored as sequences of zeros and ones so the question we want to ask now is how do we represent characters or strings using zeros and ones now when we try to represent a character in a computer a character is going to be represented by a byte that is 8 bits since you have 8 bits and each bit can take on either 0 or 1 these two possible values so you can represent 2 raised to 8 or 256 different characters and the valuations of the corresponding bytes would range from all zeros to all ones and we've already seen how to read a binary sequence of zeros and ones as a decimal integer so the all zeros is the decimal 0 and the all ones is the decimal 255 where there are exactly 8 bits in each one of them so each character that you see on your keyboard or that you want displayed on your screen like a 0 or p is going to be treated as an unsigned 8 bit integer it's going to be represented by a byte and therefore it's an 8 bit integer without a sign and we use this encoding of characters as unsigned 8 bit integers which is also called the ascii encoding the american standard code for information interchange for example upper case a is denoted by the unsigned 8 bit integer 65 in decimal upper case b is 66 in decimal the number 0 or rather the character 0 is represented by the decimal number 48 note that the character 0 is not represented by the decimal number 0 the character 0 is encoded using this 8 bit integer whose value is 48 the character dot is encoded as 46 and you can e even have the blank space character which is also a character and it's encoded by the decimal 8 bit integer 32 So since characters are going to be represented as unsigned 8 bit integers it is not surprising that characters can be compared with each other and also sorted like integers In C++ the corresponding data type is denoted by this keyword char or char unsigned char really means an unsigned 8 bit integer and so this is how you can also do integer operations on very small unsigned integer values how do you declare char or unsigned char in c++ this is the usual way we declare variables we put the type declaration in this case char here followed by the variable name or we can say unsigned char followed by the variable name as i said an unsigned char is really an unsigned 8 bit integer and you can even do integer operations with it like addition or multiplication constant characters can either be specified as unsigned integers in 0 through 255 so for example you could say const char user input is the decimal 89 basically the character which is encoded by the decimal number 89 or const char default output is the character which is encoded by the hexadecimal number 4e we have already studied about hexadecimal representation in an earlier lecture 
or constant characters can also be specified as a character symbol within single quotes. For example, I could say const char user input is y capital Y within single quotes and const char default output is capital N within single quotes. It turns out that the decimal 89 is indeed the decimal code for uppercase y and hexadecimal 4 e is indeed the code the 8 bit unsigned integer code for uppercase n. Now, how do we represent strings in a computer? A string is really a sequence or array of characters that is terminated by a special character which we will call the end of string character. So, for example, if you consider the string give input colon followed by a space remember even a blank space is a character. This really represents something like this where each box here represents one character. So, you have uppercase g lowercase i lowercase v lowercase e then a space which is a character then lowercase i n p u t colon and then there is a space which is also a character in the string and at the end of it you have a special end of string character which is the character denoted by the all 0 unsigned 8 bit integer. We also represent it using backslash 0 when we use it in programming. Now, given a string individual characters in the string can be accessed. So, you could say what is the third character in the string and you would get v lowercase v or you could also access and use the string as a whole. Recall that in Dumbo's program we had instructions like output a message string like give input colon. So, in C++ program the corresponding thing would be something like C out this redirection operator and then the same string give input. We will see more about what the C out represents and what the statement exactly in C++ what the statement does in C++, but this is the analog of what we would do in Dumbo's program. In Dumbo's program we would say output the string in C++ we will say to C out feed the string as a stream of bytes. The strings in C++ can be declared as an array of characters. So, I could say character there is an array name and this is the size of the array. So, they said that this is the name of the array and that is the size of the array that is how you declare an array of a given size where each element in that array is going to be of this data type char here. And now suppose you look at this array of characters and suppose I ask you can we store this string give input colon space which has 12 characters in all in this array. So, what do you think it would be? The answer is no because there are only 12 spaces in this array the string has 12 characters and we saw that every string needs to be terminated by a special character. So, in this case we will not be able to store this 12 characters in this array of size 12 because the string needs to be terminated by an additional character and we do not have space for that. So, to really store a 12 character string the array size must be 13 or more. A string can also be declared as a string data type and in fact, in C++ programming that is the preferred choice. For example, I could say this variable is of data type string and it is initialized to this value give input colon space that is the value of the string. Now, the string data type is certainly an array of characters, but it is a bit beyond that it also has several attributes and we will see later that it is very useful to use these attributes of objects of type string of data type string when we do C++ programming. We can also have constant strings in C++ these are usually sequences of characters enclosed in double quotes. So, I could have give input colon space the output is colon space hello world exclamation all of these exclamation characters are also parts of the string. I could also say const this is the keyword that we have seen earlier string my message hello world. So, this defines this to be a constant string and this is the value of the string and because it is a constant string its value cannot be changed during program execution. Now, how do we represent booleans inside a computer? 
the booleans are just like integers where we are only interested in whether they have the value 0 or non 0. So if it has the value 0 we say that the boolean has the value false if it has a non zero value we say that it is a true value thus 37 could mean true and also 103 could mean true any non zero value would mean true. Now earlier versions of C++ really used int to store booleans but modern versions of C++ actually implement a separate data type which is called bool and really this would be the preferred choice when programming in C++ internally it uses a form of int to store 0 and non 0 values. How do you declare it in C++ you say bool and then the name of the boolean variable in this case the name of the variable is flag. The boolean constants in C++ there are just two boolean constants true and false false is guaranteed to be 0 true is guaranteed to be something other than 0 it may not be 1 and I could define constant boolean values like const bool true value so this is the constant boolean value which has the value true and because I have this keyword constant here I cannot change the value of true value in my program. Now if we were to put all of this together all the different data types that we have studied we could try to write a C++ program that reads two numbers from the keyboard adds them and displays the result on console. Now remember we had done something similar with Dumbo and this is how Dumbo's program would look like we would say that use locations A, B, C and then we would ask it to output this message give two numbers then we would ask it to input these two values A and B add them up output the message sum is and then output the value of the sum after that and report the job as done. In C++ we are going to do something similar a similar sequence of instructions except we are going to use the syntax of C++ so this is how our C++ program would look like we would have int main we will look at what this means later on this is really saying that this is the main program that I am asking the computer to execute instead of use locations a b c I would say that I need three variables of type integer instead of saying output give two numbers I would say c out and then to it I would redirect the constant string give two numbers instead of saying input a input b I would use c in this is the common input which is our keyboard and from the common input I want to read a and b then I want to sum up a and b and store the value in c and instead of saying output sum is and then outputting c I would say in c out please print the string sum is and then print the value of c and then return 0. So we will of course see more about each of these parts of the program later but this is just to give you a glimpse of our very first C++ program. So in summary what did we study today we saw the representation of characters and strings and their declaration in C++ we saw representation of booleans and their declaration in C++ and we saw an example of how from Dumbo's program we can go to a C++ program thank you. Okay so, so here is a quiz please uh, take out your pens and notebooks and uh, so we are given this uh, string or the sequence of characters and uh, you know suppose I ask the computer to print out this string so the question is what would it print out what string would it represent right so this is almost the same as the string that we had earlier except that there was a there was no blank there, there was no additional character here but now I have put the special character over there and the special character is the same character which appeared at the end of our earlier string this is a simple question should take less than a minute to answer right so if I ask the computer to print out this sequence of characters as a string then what would it print out basically what is the string represented by this sequence of characters I mean this, this is really a very straightforward question I mean recall that this was the end of character end of string character that we had used earlier so now I have put that end of string character here and we will do this very quickly because this is a simple question there are uh, more questions and lectures so please also discuss with your neighbor about why you think your answer is correct and why uh, should be that way how many of you think that it will spend 
print give space in space put colon space okay so you think that this will get replaced by a space okay and how many of you think that it will just print given okay so i think by majority we have to accept given so indeed it is given because you know as i said this is the end of string character so the moment the computer sees this it says that's it that's the end of the string so if i ask it to put print this string it will start from here and go up to the end of the string and that's the end of the string and it will completely ignore what's there after it okay so the answer in this case is given give space in is that clear to everybody at the corner there so what was the difficulty i mean there is an end of string character so you have to just print the characters until the end of the string okay so now uh, let's look at this question this is also a fairly simple question here is a simple program uh, which has two boolean variables which are set to the boolean constants true and false and then it out outputs this and uh, let's try to see what you think this will print out so please write it down once again this is just a very simple thing i mean really in this question we are asking how is true and false going to be printed right the two boolean variables they set to true and false and we are asking how is it going to be printed yeah please swap with your neighbors and see uh, whether your answer agrees so in this question we expect variation of answers so how many pairs did not have matching answers and how many pairs had matching answers must be the remaining oh but there are some who, have, who neither had matching nor had non matching okay so so let me pick up one of those yes you, you. Yeah. so what is your answer answer is true value is true and false value is false so you think it will print the string true and the string false yeah okay great uh, how many of you think that that is the case many many right. here is an example true value is colon true and false value is colon false and both neighbors agree and i think many people agree with this right unfortunately wrong how, how many of you differ okay so oh wow okay that's also a sizable that's part not bad. yeah any that's... other place where you agree or you have convinced your neighbor that your answer is right and the neighbor is convinced uh, sir i think true value is some integer and false value is zero okay, okay. some integer so uh -huh. It will print the string some integer or no no no. Uh, it says five like five. yes sir. like uh, like like then five. So let me tell you what happens over here. So we, if you recall in the lecture we mentioned that the boolean value true is represented by anything non-zero, whereas false is always represented by zero, right? So so when you try to print out a boolean value like this, it will actually try to print the integer that is inside. so it will not print the string true or false okay because the boolean value is internally represented just like an integer however false value will certainly be printed as zero you know as we saw and true value it could be any non zero integer right so as you said that it could be some integer other than zero however the c++ standard mentions or specifies mandates that when you are trying to print out a boolean value so it might be internally represented as 139 but when you are trying to print it out and it figures out that the stuff that you are trying to print out is really declared as boolean so it might be internally represented as 139 but when it figures out that you are trying to print it out and what you are printing out was declared of boolean type it will actually print one okay so intern so, so this is an important distinction to remember that internally the number so for example if i treated this true value as an integer and added something to it i might get some other value but when i try to print out true value the c++ standard specifies that true will be printed as one however it is also convenient i mean it would be convenient if we could print out the strings true and false that somebody indicated so we will see in a later lecture that you can actually do something with this see out thing so that it actually prints out the strings true false but just this statement as it is if you are just trying to print out a boolean value if it is false it will print zero it's trying to print the integer value if it is true 
it should print whatever non-zero integer, but because that value is, because that variable is declared as boolean, while printing it will print one. Internally it may still be represented as a non-zero non integer. Is that clear? So this you should remember because, you know, input output statements are going to be an important part of the programs that you write. And, you know, a program should not output different things if two of you run the, write the same program and compile it and run it, okay. So, so this is something that was not there in the lecture, but I hope through this problem all of you have now internalized it, that printing a Boolean value is different from internally representing it. Okay, internally it could be anything other than non-zero, printing it must be one.